Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now, a few years ago while visiting cemeteries in New England, I stumbled across these cast iron perpetual care grave markers. Now, they're designed to identify which tombstones and monuments are to be tended to long term by cemetery staff. And they're just the type of detail that I'd like to add to our haunt. So in this video, I'm going to do just that. So let's get to it. The first thing I'm going to do is take this reference photo I found in an online auction site and import it into Adobe Illustrator so that I can make an outline of the grave marker. Once I'm done with the drawing and text layout, I'll merge all of the layers together and export it as an SVG file, which can then be imported into my 3D modeling software of choice, Fusion 360. With my drawing imported, I'll make a quick selection of the shape and extrude it about a half inch. Then I add a chamfer around the edges for a little added detail, as well as a quarter inch hole in the bottom that will allow me to insert a small dowel that will act as a ground spike. The last thing I need to do is to save the file, prepare it for print in my 3D slicer program, and get it onto my printer. Then I could sit back and watch the printer do its thing. And just like that, the print is finished and ready for a bit of sanding and then some paint. But before I get into paint, I'm going to start by adding a bit of texture. For this piece, I'm going to take a slightly different approach than usual by mixing up a bit of baby powder with some super glue. This will create a thin paste that I can use to stipple some texture onto the surface of the 3D print. And if all goes well, should look like an old metal casting. As an added bonus, the superglue adds some additional rigidity to the print and should help to keep its shape during the hot summer months when it's in storage. After a quick application and a few minutes of dry time, I can finally get to painting. I'm going to start with a dark gray matte chalk paint and apply it to the entire piece using the same stippling motion I used for the superglue and baby powder paste. This will add even more texture and with the addition of a brighter metallic paint should help to catch the light a bit more. Chalk paints tend to dry pretty quickly, so after a few minutes I could move on to the silver metallic acrylic paint layer. I'm aiming for a patchy application that allows both the dark and light colored paints to be visible. Sort of like what galvanized metal looks like. Once the silver paint is dry, I'll give it a quick black wash with some thinned out acrylic paint, being sure to keep my spray bottle of water handy in case the black paint goes on too heavy. Now the only thing left to do is put it in the display. They say the devil's in the details, and in this case I tend to agree. 
Well, that's going to do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. But most importantly, go make something. <laughs>